What's up, y'all? I'm back out here at the range, as you can see behind me, on what should end up being a fantastic day weather-wise. Temperature's really, really nice. Just a really light breeze going on. So I got a bunch of stuff planned for out here today, and we're going to start it off with a little guy. So as you can see, I got the new and improved jelly contraption set up out here. It's such a distance in between the parts. Now I've got a backup, but I'm still trying to work out some kinks as far as getting y'all a nice live view when I run these things across this radar here. I, as you can see, I've got a little setup going on here that's actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's nice and stable. If the little bit of a breeze shakes it, they both shake together, so there's no problem there. The only problem I've got, which is a huge problem, is there's such a glare on this nice shiny new screen that it's picking up the glare off this silver camera uh there's a camper back here back in the background that y'all don't see that is picking up all the white in the background of that so hopefully this will work out for the best if not i might have to put it on up on the screen and figure something else out but we'll worry about that later and then down here we've got two freshly melted blocks of gel no tests at all done on this one so it's the very first one of the day also as you can see i'm staying with my standard heavy clothing barrier it's got the layer of denim fleece and two layers of a cotton t-shirt material and what we're checking out here like i said is a little guy we got some 25 auto here now both of these were actually sent to me by luke so i really really appreciate that we've got some fmj here first off just some regular old ppu 50 grain fmj as you can see there's your 25 there now i looked up a couple of places where this is being sold and i believe this is stuff is around 771 feet per second is what they're saying on the box from the muzzle and you know i don't expect to see that out of this 25 especially Especially, but we'll see how close it does get and that's kind of our control round if you want to call it what i'm really interested in seeing in these winchester super x the 45 grain expanding point in 25 auto now i don't know if y'all are familiar with these and i actually think these may be discontinued now but it's actually a little hollow point and it's got a little round bb in it i don't know how well you'll be able to see that that's supposed to get pushed back and aid in expansion now at the velocities we're going to be seeing here in this little 25 auto i'll be very very surprised if that works like they're claiming it works and i looked up the velocity on these and on the newer style box that these changed to it's saying 815 feet per second at the muzzle and then of course what we're going to test them out of the only 25 auto i've got is this little phoenix arms that i just picked up the little hp 25a with the three inch barrel i personally ain't expecting a whole lot from these things but maybe i'll be surprised let me get this stuff set up and let's check them out all right y'all let's see if we can get some speeds on these things i'm gonna do a five round average on each each one starting with the FMJ first. Remember these were saying 771. Now, uh, like I say, I'm still trying to work out some kinks here. I got all kind of stuff recording. I've got this one recording the screen that if I can get the glare out, that's what I'm going to use. But I'm also trying to record my phone, uh, phone screen here through Bluetooth with the app. So maybe that'll work. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be on. So we're going to test it here on this first round. Got 762, so we are recording over there too, it looks like. 744. 777, and if y'all notice, we're getting out to 25 yards is where I've got it set to. From muzzle, seven yards, 10 yards, and 25. So that was number four. I hadn't been calling out, so I'll be putting them on the screen if I can. I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, that was all of them. So let's check out what that average was. All right, so like I said, I'm not sure which screen I'm going to be using this one or that one, but it looks like our five round average was 774 feet per second. Uh, we had an extreme spread of 56 and a standard deviation of 21.5. So let me get this reset and let's try out them expanding points. All right, let's check out these expanding points. Um, I didn't even realize we actually did exceed that 7071, uh, the 771 that that FMJ was calling for. I also don't know if I mentioned, but obviously what this data right here that you're seeing real time is muzzle. If you can see that little screen, if that's what I post, you'll be able to see the next one. I've got the next one set for three yards, which is nine feet, obviously. Now the gel is right at 10 feet from where I'm at. So it's within a foot. So that's pretty much actual gel velocity and info that you're getting at that three yard marker. But anyway, let's get these speeds done five rounds on the expanding points 861 890 859 898 
895 and that was it wasn't it yeah that was it so that was all five of them those definitely exceeded what the box said let's check that info all right so before i switch this thing over to the summary screen i just wanted to show y'all how little difference there is from muzzle to that nine yards or to that three yards that nine feet if you'll see there on this last one it was 895 at the muzzle at the three yard marker it was 891 so it was only four feet per second difference and some of the rounds are probably not even that it's probably even closer but anyway our five round average that time was 880 extreme spread was 39 with a standard deviation of 18.9 so five round average 880 and if you remember on them fmjs it was 774 so you're talking about 106 feet per second faster from these expanding points now granted these are five grains heavier but that's a pretty good difference there i'm really curious now at this point at uh, almost 900 feet per second maybe these things will expand in the gel i really just don't have that much faith still but well, let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's if it starts with a two is it too small for you jelly time we'll put one round of each into the gel starting with this fmj first as you can see now i've got this thing set up for the jelly round here but i might have an issue i might have to redo this and adjust this a little bit because i've got this thing set like i say at muzzle and three yards but we're probably a little bit short of three yards just because of how i've had to set it forward a little bit but let's see what happens if we get the uh if we get the reading on the three yards we good to go if not <laughs> we gotta we gotta uh, drop back and punt here well, let's see what i can do i didn't even check my point of impact for this thing so hopefully it goes about where i want it let's see that went exactly where i was aiming let's go check that out All right, y'all, that was a perfect hit down there. But as you can see, I totally forgot to even look. I got to remember this is on. We got a weird reading here. We didn't get a proper reading on this thing for sure. We got 387 at the muzzle, and I've only got one little bar lit up there as far as signal. Um, I, it's going to be weird because I tried not to move this thing much and get my camera out of whack, but I might have to readjust. I want to just try one right quick and see uh, what kind of reading I might get, not putting it in the jail here. So... This probably ain't going, it's probably going to give me a little bit of a hard time, but let's see what I can get here. All right, so I got a reading that time, 783. So <laughs> sorry, but I ain't gonna get no reading on that jelly round that went in there. But I'd say, like I say, y'all saw from the muzzle average to the three yard there, it was only four or five, something like that. But I'll try to get it to read on this next one anyway. All right, that FMJ looks pretty much like FMJ does. Looks like it tumbled down there. So let's try this expanding point. I backed this thing back up a little bit. So it's at exactly the nine foot mark now, right where it's sitting at here. So hopefully, Hopefully it'll read at least it'll hopefully it'll at least read the muzzle anyway because if y'all noticed on that last round the uh there was only one foot per second difference as far as velocity between the muzzle and the gel down there so if it don't read if it only gets a muzzle that's i mean honestly that's fine with me for one feet per second off i'm not gonna sweat that but hopefully it'll get both of them now with this little bit of adjustment i made let's see what this thing does i don't think this is gonna do much more than that fmj if i was guessing See if I can line up as best as I can here. All right, that should have been a good one. I'm not exactly sure. I think I see where it went. Let me go see what I got. All right, I almost forgot we were trying to catch the velocity again. And as you can see, another error. It told me 631 at the muzzle. I know that's not right. And it was a lot bigger drop at three yards, which again, I know is not right. I think it's because it, the actual projectile stopping at that three yards because like y'all saw when I took the test round and went beside it where it could keep on trucking and get to reading, it didn't have any problems. So I'm gonna adjust a couple more little settings on here and maybe for this next test, try something different. But for now, let's go check out what we got. All right, let's check out what we got down here, y'all. I actually been messing around with that radar for the last several minutes here. I think I figured out what I got going on. It might be a combination of being too close. I turned the power level down some, and it seems to be reading every one that I ran through it. So anyway, let's get this one done, and I'll figure that out on the next test. So what we got down here looks like basically FMJ performance, like I said, out of the FMJ and out of the expanding point. The expanding point looks just like the FMJ. So on the top, that was the PPU FMJ 
Jay, as you can see, comes in here, definitely tumbles right there at least one time, and it's sitting down here backwards, totally intact, no kind of expansion, no nothing like that. Maybe about three inches from the end of this first block. And then on the bottom, obviously, that's that expanding point. Like I said, that one looks pretty much just like the FMJ. Comes in here, you can see again, no doubt it tumbles right there at least once, keeps on trucking through this first block, and actually stops exactly at the end of that first block. It, I mean, it touched that second one, but didn't penetrate it at all, and it rebounded just maybe a quarter of an inch on this uh, first block, but it went all of that 16 inches, and I'm guessing that's because it was a little bit lighter, could have been how it tumbled. Who knows? FMJs are really, really inconsistent. You just never know what you're going to get from them, and this is what that acted like was an FMJ. So as far as your penetration on them, this PPU FMJ is exactly 13 inches, and then the expanding point down on the bottom down there, well, again, I don't even have to measure. That one is exactly 16 inches. You probably don't really even need a closer look at these. Not really much to see, just pretty much what we see out of an FMJ every single time. You can see it's actually sitting down there backwards, and then that expanding point basically acted just like this FMJ, also sitting down there backwards. All right, y'all, let's take a quick look at these projectiles. Not really a whole lot to see here. No kind of expansion, deformation. They didn't do what they were supposed to. Well, this FMJ did what it was supposed to. This expanding point, obviously, you can see, didn't do what it was supposed to. You can see the little BB still there in the point there. I'd really like to see what this thing does if it expands and performs properly. I don't know what all other calibers they made these in. Like I say, I'm pretty sure they don't make them at all anymore, but I wouldn't mind running across a larger caliber to see if you could get these things to do what they're actually supposed to do because as you can see this one here didn't and one really other odd thing is it's really shaved down this projectile all the way around has got a lot of material shaved off from around it whereas you can see this fmj it's not like that i mean it's got a little bit of marking where it came out of the case down through the barrel but nothing like that uh, expanding point right there that makes me think that one right there was a little bit oversized but let's get some measurements and see what we got we'll weigh them up up first here the fmj started at 50 grains and it's at 49.4 so i'd say no kind of loss at all right there and this expanding point started at 45 and it's actually at 45.2. I would have expected it to be a little bit lighter because of what I'm seeing shaved off there. But now that I'm looking at it, I believe this is actually a plated round and not a jacket at all. And let's get some sizes on them. So this one right here, the FMJ, their base is obviously gonna be the biggest section of it. You got 246 and 247. And then as far as the length on it, you got 470. And then on this expanding point here, you got 253 and 246. So you they have some signs there of that getting squeezed through the barrel and then the length on this one here is 416 and there you have it y'all some fmj and winchester expanding point in 25 acp pretty much what i expected out of these i mean the fmj does what it does just about every time depending on whether it tumbles or not so no surprise there this expanding point really no surprise there either i was kind of hoping that they might have known what they were doing when they made this thing and was able to get it to do what it needed to do at lower velocities like that but obviously not i mean this thing just didn't do anything at all like i said i'm kind of disappointed in that only because i would really like to see what it actually does look like when it does perform so maybe i'll try to look and see if i can find some larger calibers in this but if any y'all do have like a heads up on it you know where i might can find some let me know down in the comments all right, y'all, I'm gonna wrap it up right there for this one here that I guess you could call a mini Mouse test. Again, no real surprises here. Really, the only surprise I had was that they actually met the velocities off the box. They actually exceeded the velocities on the box as far as the average. Now, I think a couple of them of each one might have dipped below, but as an average, they were above what the box claimed on velocity. But then after that, that's where the surprises stopped. Performance in the jail, definitely nothing to write home about. Now, it did get the penetration that we looked for. I mean, 16 inches out of one of 
some 13 inches out of the FMJ. So penetration is there for sure. You're just lacking a lot on the energy. I mean, a whole lot on the energy off of those things. So I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's much better than nothing and much better than a sharp stick, I guess, depending on how long that stick is. But if I had a choice between this and something else, I wouldn't be grabbing the 25 Auto. Now, that being said, I do have a few more tests already planned for these things. And I do have some more modern stuff that hopefully will perform a little better than what we saw out here today. But let me know what y'all think about these 25 ACP rounds. Is this something that some of y'all do carry or that you would carry? Let me know what you think about the performance we got out of them. If you enjoyed the video, reach down and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you got them notifications turned on so you don't miss anything that I upload. If you're doing some shopping, take a second and hit up those affiliate links in the video description. Anything you buy from any of those links down there, I get a kickback from them towards the channel, so I really appreciate that. As always, I appreciate all my Range Gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel. I've got a lot of good stuff planned for today and tons of more stuff on the way, so be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.